President Trump's return to the White House brought with it a wave of controversy, with many of his critics, especially those in the media, going as far to say that the move was nothing more than a publicity stunt. However, it was hardly the only thing that people were highlighting over the past 24 hours. So we're going to break down the top headlines among the media. And joining us to help us do that, it is Curtis Houck, the managing editor of the media watchdog group Newsbusters, the official blog of the Media Research Center. So Curtis, always a pleasure having you on. But I do want to start with the CNN's response to the president's return back to the White House, specifically what media reporter Brian Stelter characterized the whole scene as. So really quick, let's take a look. It's not a real show of strength, but it's a performative show of strength. This is what strong men do in, in autocratic regimes. Of course, thankfully, we are in a democracy. Uh, but this is the kind of thing you see in, uh, from strong men who want to appear to be leading. It's a dear leader sort of approach. Uh, and I think that is what we are seeing on our television screens. Meanwhile, there are big questions about the cover-up. You know, why won't they tell us about his testing history when he was tested? We've moved from this possibly being a cover-up to actually being a cover-up. So, Curtis, would you say that that clip is symbolic of the way that much the media portray that event? Yeah, I would definitely say so. It's fundamentally unserious. You know, what you saw yesterday was a collective meltdown of epic proportions. And I think those are terms that get used a lot and maybe overused at this point in the Trump era. But I certainly think that was definitely one for the ages, not just across CNN. You had MSNBC's Joy Reid saying this was a Mussolini moment or something out of the czarists in Russia, priest, uh, you know, Lenin. Uh, it really was something to see there. And, and it was one of those instances, Alex, where you would think you, you felt as if a lot of these liberal journalists, people like Brian Stelter just pulled off their thesaurus and it was kind of this word game where they would kind of take a word bad or ugly or authoritarian and try to find synonyms to fit that uh, description there. Because clearly what was happening here is the president is feeling well enough to go back to the White House, and they assume that what the president's doctors are saying must be lies. Mm -hmm. So you would think as a viewer, okay, so what's the opposite of that? So what are the media looking for? What they were looking for is the president to be struggling with this virus and far worse than that. No, oh, yeah, I mean, that's an excellent point. To some degree, they're portraying what the wishful thinking is because, I mean, the president going back to the White House is not controversial. Uh, and then him going up to the balcony, I noticed, too, that they were really taking an issue with that. But that's not a rare thing for presidents to do. I mean, there were pictures of resurfacing of President Obama speaking from that very same balcony as well. It's not as ominous, I think, as many people think. But staying on CNN for one more moment, I thought it was interesting to see what Chris Cuomo had to say about this development. He took a very hardline approach to this event, going as far to call it propaganda. But some people on the Internet, they did notice a little bit of irony in his statement. So I want to show here how he responded and why some are calling it hypocritical. Let's take a look. Just one time with no mask tonight. He had his video crew capture that stupid scene again so he could put out propaganda fronting a lie to his people once again, just like don't worry about the mask. Now he says, don't worry about COVID. Don't let it control your life. Just propaganda. That's all it is. All right, here it is. The official re-entry from the basement. Cleared by CDC, a little sweaty, just worked out, it happens. This is what I've been dreaming of, literally for weeks. So, Curtis, we know that that's not the first time he was resurfacing from the basement because he got into a physical altercation with a biker and he was out with his family visiting a new house. I mean, there are documented examples of Chris Cuomo being out and about, not being just in his basement this entire time. So what does that speak to the way that really CNN is trying to portray a lot of events, not just necessarily the president's coronavirus? Yeah, CNN is belligerent, sleazy, performative. It's WWE without the excitement, uh, to paraphrase a great column last week from T. Beckett Adams of the Washington Examiner. So I think, yeah, the issue here is, yeah, the hypocrisy here is just rank. You know, where are the fact checkers in this? Mm. You know, CNN's own fact checkers aren't going to fact check Joe Biden because he's not the president and his lies don't mean as much. So what about your own network? What's going on here? Or other news outlets? You would think that, yes, yeah, somebody with the 9 p.m. show on CNN would want to talk, you know, want to be straight and have his facts all buttoned up, but that's not what he is. It was, a, you know, some people pointed out a roy, roid rage yeah. uh, of, that he was undergoing. You know, it was it was really something to behold. He's just cursing, uh, you know, talking about how he doesn't have to feign uh, any concern for the president's health anymore, that he's back at the White House. I mean, this is really sick stuff, but this is the same guy who last week 
when fighting with Ted Cruz for 20 minutes, suggested that coronavirus and the pandemic is not political to him. His analysis and his delivering of the news on the pandemic is not political because he had the virus uh, along with his wife and son. But as we know, yeah, it entirely is political. That's exactly what this is. And as you noted, yeah, the hypocrisy of the fact that, yes, he left his home, he left his basement, went with his family to a home that's being built uh, also out on Long Island yeah. uh, when New York was still under stay-at-home order. So, yeah, uh, you know, the, the stories don't really, you know, it's all for us to see. No, you're exactly right. And I think it kind of goes along with the same thing of kind of the performative interviews that he would do with his own brother during a time where New York was experiencing the greatest coronavirus crisis in the entire country. And his brother directly responsible for some of those deaths in a way by implementing a policy that forced some elderly coronavirus patients back into nursing homes. And we know how damaging that was in hindsight, but it just didn't get covered. And in the meantime, Andrew Cuomo coming on Chris Cuomo's show and them having the, the fake coronavirus testing, it was just totally wrong not to mention journalistically unethical. But speaking of that as well, amid all of this, there has been a resurfacing of a problem that's been going on for several years now, and it's news anchors now thinking that they're doctors. It was a problem back in 2016, I admit, regarding Hillary Clinton. It's been consistent regarding President Trump's mental health during his presidency, and now it's coming back amid his coronavirus diagnosis. So I want to show Nicole Wallace of MSNBC. Here she is. I think people wondered whether there was an event that could open the door into that human experience for Donald Trump. Some people thought maybe becoming one of the seven million positive cases would do it. It doesn't appear to have had that impact on him, or at least in any manner that he's willing to incorporate into public messaging. I mean, to tweet today that he feels better than he felt 20 years ago is a suggestion that maybe some of the side effects of the drugs are being manifested on his Twitter feed. It's just off the wall and deeply disturbing. So, I mean, that's just yet another example, and I heard a lot of it over this past couple of days, and it was the idea of the media taking aim at doctors even at some times. I mean, we know that, for example, there was some mixed messaging when it came to the president's diagnosis and his condition over the weekend, but it's one thing for doctors to push back, in my opinion. It's a completely different thing for former Bush administration officials or whoever it is to all of a sudden being the doctors in the room. Do you agree? Yeah, absolutely. Nicole Wallace is perhaps uh, the one person in the media with the worst case of Trump derangement syndrome. I'll, I'll give her that. Mm. Yeah, I mean, as a side note, yes, people, millions of Americans take steroids for basic things like allergies or other physical ailments. So to suggest that this is something that's nefarious and awful and terrible, I mean, it's just, uh, it's pretty disgusting, actually, you know, because it's something that a lot of Americans need and help them get through certain illnesses. And you pointed out, yeah, this has been going on for four or five, you know, six years, number of years now with President Trump, where, yeah, they play psychologist here. You have, pe and you find people that are willing to do it, like Bandy Lee, or um, it, there, there was a guest on CNN with Brian Selter who suggested President Trump's state meant that he's killed more people than Hitler, Stalin, and Mao combined here. Mm. And there was no pushback on that. So, yeah, I mean, it's this playing of doctor here, analyzing the way the president walked to Marine One to go to Walter Reed on Friday, um, parsing the words of what the doctors said. And I should point out for the doctors, well, yes, there was certainly mixed messaging. I would add that, yeah, this is uh, PR is not something that doctors go to school for. Right. Um, and usually the pre they're not out in front giving press conferences unless there's something bad going on with the president. You don't really know who the White House physician is unless there's something wrong with the president. No, you're exactly right. And there's a reason why people are skeptical to trust them when it comes to news reporting. And there's a reason, too, why I don't think the average American wants to get medical advice from someone who's just merely a journalist. But Curtis Houck, I really appreciate you coming on the program tonight, helping us break down and make some sense of these media headlines. Thank you.